Hey everybody, it's Collector Dude. I had a hunt uh, yesterday. It's Sunday today. I went Saturday for a few hours, uh, and I went to my local comic book store, um, one of them, uh, The Laughing Ogre, and then I went to one of my uh, half price books uh, stores and picked up, and then I went to another local comic book store in my area, uh, Comic Town, and I picked up some books. And most of everything was a dollar. It's because Comic Town has a big uh, stack that just put out like, like 10, 15 boxes of all dollar books. So I went there and got those. And then I went to one of the other stores, Pack Rat. They have their, um, there's something going on with them right now so they can't, Pack Rat Comics, they can't get their books out right now. So there's a problem. So I won't, wasn't able to go there, which I'm looking forward to go back to them because they had hundreds of boxes. So I'm like, I'm, I'm, I am looking forward to go back there for a dollar. But uh, half price books, I went there and got their dollar books. And like I said, I went to Laughing Ogre and got um, some new, a few newer books and everything. But um, I'm going to show you what I got. Uh, hopefully, um, it's all fun and games and everybody has a good time. But here's my first stack here. Some of my mixed up, I can't remember which ones I got exactly from half price books in my local comic book store, Comic Town. Because I went and got the dollar books, and I mixed them together. And I got a lot of Mike Diodato artwork. I'm doing my art book for Mike Di the Marvel artwork of uh, Mike Diodato Jr. And when I went out there, I said, I'm going to go get the comic books that are in that book. And it's he's got some beautiful work. So what I'm going to be doing is doing comic book flip-throughs, like I did with the um, Enhanced uh, Batman 56. I'm going to be doing flip-throughs of all of his books. So look forward to that. Um, he's got some... The way he draws is like, Wow! So look at that cover there. This is Avengers, uh, New Dark Avengers, number um, 15. And awesome cover. And one of my other videos, I just saw this picture too that he did. So that's that. And like I said, I got a stack of them. This one, he didn't do the cover on it, but I always look for the name. Diodato. And he. this is Avengers number 39. And let's see, I'll open this one up. So I can prove to you that it's his artwork inside. So it, it's it's a mixture of um, Jim Chung and Mike Diodato. This is Mike Diodato artwork. And let's see, find another one in here. Just it's just really cool. I like how he the hard blacks, solid blacks. And the color and everything. And there's really no border. I mean, he's got border lines on there. But it's just, he's got some really nice, just the way he does his pencils. Look at this square here. Just really nice. So that's that. That was number 39 of Avengers. And you got to be careful when you uh, set your books down on top of the sticky resealable bag. Because I pulled it off without a, without a hitch. So, let's see. Now we got... Thunderbolts. He did that, and I didn't even realize some of these books. Like I said, I've been, I went back and saw them, and I wasn't collecting everything back then, but I'm collecting more now. So I'm finding all these books. And I'm like, wow, I got to grab that one. As soon as I see his name, pick it up. So Thunderbolts, uh, number one fifteen. He did the cover on that, and some of these I might, I might open up and show them, but uh, that's that one. This is Thunderbolts, number. Uh, 115 that was number 115 this is no it can't be one this is 118 nice cover and this one is thunderbolts number 117 so i want to go back and collect just about every one of his books if i can this is invincible iron man number 12 civil war 2 you see he's got some really nice art in these uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing a flip through of all of these books because they're just beautiful. This is uh, Invincible Iron Man number six. And this is The Road to Civil War number two, Invincible Iron Man number 11. The covers are awesome too. Just the colors. His colors is awesome. It's like, wow. I'm not sure if that's Martin is his last name. Some of the names I can't remember. I read them through the. Uh, art book, but wow, this is Invincible Iron Man number 14, 
Here's number 13. He's just a great artist. And then I found these. These are Clayton Crane, uh, Ghost Riders. Uh, this is number six of six. Look at that. And some of the hot covers that are out now, that everybody's going after all the variants and everything. Look back at some of the other stuff. If you can go back in your um, in your archives or something like that, go on midtimecomics.com or uh, mycomicshop.com is really good at that. Mile High Comics. Um, I'm not sure if Unknown Comics went back that far in some of those, but uh, look at some of those back um, companies and um, look at their sites and see if you can find these. But I was just flipping through on a hunt and found these. I'm thinking, wait a minute, I think I remember when these came out, but I didn't get them. But he does the he does the artwork on the inside as well. So that's number six of six. This is number four of six. Nice. And then I found number three of six. So just really nice artwork. Let me show you some of the artwork in the number six of six. That's the last one. I I saw the cover for one and two, and I gotta go back and if I can find them. They're on uh, mycomicshop.com, mycomicshop.com, but uh, and they're like a dollar seventy, two bucks. Uh, here's like the first page in there. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing a flip through of his stuff as well. At least at, le at least these books. Until I find two. What's what's cool is the the blue that he adds. Like when you look at your stove or the old stoves or something like that, you see gas or a propane tank or something like that. It's blue, blue flame, mixed with uh, the orange, the combustion part. Just awesome. Just the. Uh, Let's see, wait a minute, here's a, let me find another picture. Um, this here, wild, wild stuff. But um, I'm looking forward to reading these and flipping through these because he's got some really nice stuff in here. Um, and the way he paints... I mean, I'm not sure how he does it. It's like, wow. Here's like another one here. Like I said, but I'll be doing a flip through of these three books because they're just, just beautiful artwork. Um, along with some of the other ones. I like to go through some of my enhanced books and show you those as well. But now we're back to Diodato again. I stuck those in there. These are um, New Avengers. This is number 12. Just nice covers. Here's New Avengers number 84. Uh, no, number 24. And New Avengers number 30. I remember that white costume on him. They even have an action figure of that, of uh, Iron Fist. And some of the action figures I got, you can see them on the wall and everything. Um, I have a lot of those, but I stopped collecting them. Some are like, like $25, $30 each, and it, it kind of gets kind of tight. So the books are a lot cheaper, so I get those. Here's number 34. But just really nice, man. Everything. This is number 27. I'm not sure who the girl is. Like I said, but I'm going to do a flip through them all. And I noticed when I do the flip throughs, I can read the comic book too. Because a lot of them, I collect all these. I mean, see, try to collect all these and then sit down and read them. If you got a family and everything gonna be tight work stuff on the house and everything like that cleaning up whatever it's hard to get to everything so the sit the, the chinist i don't know how that man does it he'll read 20 30 books and he'll show here i got a stack of 15 i got a stack of 29 and some speculation books and this cat will read every single one of them and then tell you about them on his site and you're like on his channel you're like how does he read these but and Robbie Rance, he does it too. I don't know how I don't know how they read these books and get on there. And I'm collecting all this stuff. And like uh I so to help me read them, I'm gonna flip through them with you guys and we'll read them together 
and look at the artwork because I love doing these art books too. So it'll be a, a, a two, two in one. So here's this. But these guys, those guys are awesome how they read those books. And there's many others that do it too. This is number, uh, Key Comics Market Watch guy does it. But he call, he laughs because he gets a stack of books and he's talking about, I spent way too much money, way too much money. And then uh, he has a stack of books and it, you know, he don't get around, he'll, he'll read some of them. He don't get to read them all, but it's funny because I laugh when he says it because I know exactly what you do. You go out and buy a stack of books like, these are beautiful. I can't wait to read them. Then you, you look at your to read pile and it's one foot, two foot, three foot. And it's getting almost as tall as me, but they're in boxes. Two, uh, and, you know, you get the long boxes. They hold about 200 books. And then I don't like to put them in there where I can't get my hand in there. So I leave a little space, but not enough where they're going to bend. Maybe prop something behind it. But um, I don't know. Every. Tell me what you think. Um, everybody un understands that that struggle of trying to read and collect at the same time. But this one's, uh, what did I say this was? Number 28. But I just love that his style. He, I mean, it's, it's just, it's powerful. Look at this one. This is number 25. And they, some of these they made reprints of. I was going to write down which ones I still need and let you guys know. But um, it would have took a little bit of time. So I said, you know, just flip through the book, show everybody what you got. And talk a little bit and let them enjoy looking at these covers. It's just, he he is very good. I like Mike Diodato Jr. I got to meet that guy. And this one's number 19. This one is awesome. I love this. This is the powerful thing. They look like animals. Like uh, Wolverine. It's like an animal. And you see him like, you know, you see, you see a dog or a cat in the dark and their light eyes are glowing. You're like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I I gotta hope I got a bat or a stick or something like that, because uh, I don't know if this thing is gonna come at me. But uh, okay, this one's this one's got a different cover. Uh, I'm not sure who this is. I think this is Steve McNiven, and, and I couldn't find it on when I was looking at my collector comics thing. I was adding all these in this morning, and to try to make sure I had them so I would know what I had and remember what I had when I go to the comic book store. I flip through and go, okay, I got that one, got one. A lot of times I can remember, but sometimes, you know, you can't remember everything. So, this is number 17. So, I look for the name at the top. I said, Diodato, grab it. But, nice cover by McNiven. Okay, here we go. This one's number 18. And what's this guy's name? The actor? I don't know why I, I, I sh should have looked his name up before I turned the video on, but... Um, I can't remember his name, but played Two Face in Batman and in all the Chase movies with uh, Wesley Snipes and everything. And I he used him and for the for uh, the Green Goblin. It's just it's very cool. So, but um, it, it looks like him, just like they used um, Samuel L. Jackson for Nick Fury. But this one's a different cover. But this one's number six. And with Diodato's artwork. This is cool. I like I like when he does the covers as well. This is number seven. Master Kung Fu. So I'm gonna look look for I'm gonna go through I'm gonna make as many videos as I can today when I got the time and everything and then I gotta do some drawing. But this is number nine of uh this is him too. Mike Diodato Diodato Jr. Uh Secret Avengers. And then, yeah, it's number nine. Here's number ten. And I, like I said, these were one from Comic Town. I went there and I flipped through about 20 boxes and I grabbed every single one that came out, even if they were doubles. And then I went through and found the nicest ones. You know, you do that. Find the nicest ones and put the other ones back. And it was very neatly putting them back. Somebody, I, I don't think I've ever really seen anybody. If you're a comic book collector, I don't think, really think I've ever seen anybody just like shovel man like they don't care. Because usually we all know, hey, somebody else is going to come back. You put them in nicely, push that, push that comic book back, put them in real nicely, so the next guy, next girl, can come back and find some nice stuff. Because I see girls like crazy in these comic book stores buying books. I mean, I don't know if it was always like that, but every time I went to a comic book store, it was always guys. And teens, when I was a teen, up to up to now, in my 50s. So, just they, they're in there too, which is cool. Because I always taught my girls to like comic books and artwork and stuff. And this is, like I said, this is number 10. And my son. And he draws like I do. So he's in sports right now. He's in a lot of sports. He's doing football. 
and so but this is number Dark Avengers number four. So this is very cool. And this the the female artists that are at Marvel and DC and all these other companies, they got some awesome artists. It's like girls can do what guys can do with that art stuff. And I just love the artwork. Amanda Connor and I know there's other ones, but I can't think of them right now. But um cool writers as well. They got the girl Marguerite. Uh, she writes uh, Animosity. Awesome. I mean, this is uh, Bendis doing uh, Dark Avengers uh, number five. Uh, Dark Avengers number five. Look at that cover. And this was in the uh, Marvel art of uh, Mike Diodato Jr. I showed that already. This is another one. This is after McFarlane, he says. This is number 11. Look how cool that is. All that webbing. All you artists out there, does it inspire you to wait? Hey, I'm going to sit down and draw today. Or even people that don't really draw, say, I'm going to try some of that. Look at some of that and try to copy it. Or even use tracing paper, put it on the thing and, and draw over the tracing paper and teach yourself how to draw a little bit if you, if you want to take the time. Use the tracing paper, copy the picture, put it down on the uh, paper, you know, like a carbon copy if you want to do, over the pencils, and then put it down and then rub it onto the paper and then move it off and then trace the lines. And then ink it. And just practice. But this is Dark Avengers number 9. We've seen this one already. Nick Fury shooting Ares. Point blank. Center mass. Wow. If you saw Negotiator, you know what I'm talking about. Samuel Jackson. Look, center mass. Dark Avengers. Just like uh, Danny Glover on... Uh, uh, what's the show? Him and uh, Mel Gibson. Center mass. Center mass. And that's number 12. But look how cool that is. Just all of them on that white cover. And I was surprised the cover was still white. It maybe have maybe a few smudges, but not really. Nice. This is number three. The Dark Avengers. Cool color cover. I talked about that one already. Rolling your eyes up in your head like that. That probably kind of hurts a little bit. It, uh, get dizzy. Go ahead, and these are from... Half price books, but I, some of them, like, like I said, are mixed. But I know these were from half price books. This is Dark Avengers number 14. Fill in the gaps. And just like I said, I can't wait to flip through those. And I think that might be all my. Uh, yeah, that might be all my. Uh, no, I got some more. I got some more. But here we'll, we'll jump to the other ones from half price books. No, these are from my comic town. That was from my comic town. Those other ones were from um, Half Price Books and my comic town as well. But like I said, I mixed them all again and forget. But Spanner's Galaxy, I never saw this before, and there was six of them. So I got number one, and I went through 20 books, 20 boxes, and I didn't want to go back and try to find the other ones. So I just grabbed number one when I saw it. So I'll check that one out. Maybe I'll do a flip through of that. Uh, Rawhide Kid. This was at Half Price Books. Because usually when you find the really nice books that are worth something, they're not at the comic book store. Those, those guys know what they're doing. But half price books, they don't care. Like I said, I talked to a guy one time. He goes, oh, we don't think people are going to come in here and bring their nice collections that are worth a lot of money to bring their books in here for us to sell for a dollar so or a little, or half price or cheaper. So we're not going to um, really mark them up. And I said, guys do that sometimes. People do that. Because I said, you got some book. I told one person, I said, you got some books that are worth a lot of money. But I don't tell everybody that because I don't want them to be like, hey, we can make some money. Let's make these books $10, $20. No, there's some that they do that are really worth it, that are signed. But most of the comic books, they throw them in a pile and you get them all for a dollar. This one, I think, was worth maybe 10 bucks or something like that. It's not in bad shape. Got a few marks on it, so it's probably fair to find. What's this one? This one's Tom Sawyer, Marvel Comics, Marvel Classics comics number seven this one i think in mere meat near meant to find was uh 10 bucks and it's like fine and the front looks better in the back and it's got some bends and everything in the cover but it's flat but i thought it was cool since it was older and it wasn't really in bad shape if i see an older book and it's in really bad shape i don't want it just to have it maybe i'll get it for a reading copy but i usually like even a reading copy to look um halfway decent so and I don't know if I'll grade them or not. We'll see. Now, these are some of the newer ones that I got from my uh, local comic book store. This was um, Laughing, The Laughing Ogre. 
Murder Falcon. I heard that was really good. Jim Comics talked about it. So I said, let me pick this up. And uh, Robbie, Ro Robbie Rance talked about it. But I said, let me pick this one up. This is the variant cover. And I didn't see that when I entered it in my co collector comics thing. It didn't have that variant in there. It just had the regular cover. So I, I don't know. This looked really good. Uh, I think um, Jim Comics talked about this. Sparrowhawk. I saw it on um, Midtown Comics when I ordered it. When I looked at the order a few weeks ago last week. And... I was like, oh, I don't know if I want it or not. And I put a, had a whole stack in there and they started getting up really high in price. So I removed this one and I said, I don't know if it'll re do well or not, but I'll come back and get it if I can. Cause I always try to try number ones and, and I heard it was really good. So I went and picked it up. I flipped through it. The artwork's beautiful in there. Let me flip through it. I'll show you this real quick. It, the artwork didn't look too bad and it artwork looks good in murder Falcon as well. So. It's not great. It's not great. It's real, the line work and everything. Hopefully, come on, focus. But the line work's not bad and everything. But it's, it, they're not uh, skimping on the artwork. I mean, you know, some books, though, they seem like they skimp and they don't want to put any backgrounds in. And you're like, um, it's kind of cool. Just action stuff. And the story was kind of intriguing when I heard about it, but I, I can't remember exactly what it is. It's some demonic presence or something like that or something that she has to fight. And it's uh, like in Victorian times. So I thought that was kind of cool. So let me try that. Uh, I'll try that out. It's got different creatures in it and stuff. So I said, let me try this one out and see. Like I said, you know, you, you don't have to keep buying it if you don't want it. So it's your money stuff so and this is what i was talking about they usually don't when i went to laughing ogre they usually let you uh just buy one copy especially if it's a popular copy because they don't want people just buying them and selling them on ebay and taking all their stock and nobody has a chance to get a copy of the book so they usually limit one per customer and midtown comics will do that online sometimes signed books or real popular books they'll um limit it to one per customer and uh but she let me get two of these and this was the um, one popular book. I saw it at Midtown Comics, but I didn't get it. The same thing um, with Deadshot. He's in the first one getting hit. So I'm not sure what they're fighting. But it just, Matina, I mean, you can't go wrong with his covers. Even if you just get it for the cover. They're just beautiful. So, and you know, that's uh, Harlequin. And she broke her uh, mallet. So, uh-oh. But she let me get two of them. So, like I said, I might use that. I don't sell them usually on eBay if I do anything with them, I'll, I'll give them away as uh, prize gifts for uh, subscribers eventually. Uh, this is, I'm building my uh, collection up for that as well. Two or three of each book that I like that's really cool. And this one's really nice. This is Art Germ, Catwoman, number four. He's really cool. She looks like an actress that I've seen before. And I, and I can't think of her right now. I think she played... Of a Joran on uh, Deep Space Nine. I can't remember. I don't remember her name. She wore all orange. It kind of looks like that a little bit. If you know what I'm talking about. But very pretty. And this one I heard was really good. So I got it for the cover. I saw it and I passed it up on MidtownComics.com. I think this is number seven or something like that. Uh, let's see what I make sure I got it right. Yeah, number six. Number six of Doctor Strange. So it's just really a really nice cover. And it's like you're buying them for the covers sometimes now. It's like, wow, lately. But this looked really interesting. I flipped through Infinite Dark. Number one from Image. I said, I'm going to try this one out. Like I said, you try the number one issues, and if it sounds intriguing to you, and just think about it, I mean, it looks like they're out in space, and somebody got dropped out in space. So I'm like, wow. I'm going to do a flip through for this one. But let's see. Now I got my... Um, books from half price books and i got some sign stuff too i was surprised when i saw them i'm like hey how did get how, there's a lot of sign stuff but some of them I, I don't pick up everything but um this was black hawk number 273 it says the last issue marky vanier and i like him because some of his stuff he did with jack kirby 
but that was cool. And I'll set that over here. These I've been trying, I talked about in some of my other videos, the what ifs. I saw this and I grabbed it right away. What if Hulk went berserk? That was really cool. And I didn't see a barcode, so I had to, um, I forgot how I found the, um, the we had to put it in the, um, the collector comics thing. I think I had to punch in something else to get them all to come up. I think this is volume one of what ifs. I had to punch in what if volume one in the collector series thing. And then it, it showed everything you and you just tap it and then add to your collection. That was really cool. So I'm trying to find some, so I don't have to pay like the full price at mycomicshop.com. Some of them are pretty expensive. And if I can find them, or even the reprints, they're coming out with the True Believer reprints. I could even get some of those because I got the first one of um, What Ifs with Spider-Man joining the Fantastic Four. What if he did that? And I got the original one signed by Rob Liefeld. And, and uh, I forgot who the other guy was. Maybe Jim Valentino and Scott Williams signed it as well. And that was the, uh, what, what if, um, no, that wasn't that one. That was uh, the first one. But Rob Liefeld signed the one with Jim Valentino and uh, Scott Williams on what if, uh, Wolverine was an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. I got that one. Uh, let's see what this one is. Okay, we're back to Diodato again. The New Avengers Fear Itself. This is number 16. I just love the covers. The dynamics. Everything. His composition. Everything. How he lays everything out. It just draws you into the um, book. And then the inks. How they do that. I'm not sure if he inks everything. Or I got. I'm not sure if he does. I think he inks his stuff as well. But the colorist, look at that. I mean, when you see it in black and white, it looks flat with just the black, hard blacks and then the white part of the page of the of the figure. But when he when it's colored, it's like, wow, the light source and everything. But see, he also puts the light source in there because of the shadowing. So you know the light source is coming from this way and everything. The light, see, the light's not hitting that. It's hitting this side over here, and then the light is in front of him and he's shading in the back the shadows are in the back teach you about light source i used to do that when i was a kid shine a flashlight on my face and everything and they'll do that like in art books they'll show you shine, shine a um, light flashlight on you and upward look so you can see what it looks like and what shadows really interesting to do so you, if you get somebody to take a picture of you and then you can practice drawing your shading and everything like that or even the shadows on my face from the light over here you can see how it's a little dark over here and stuff you know but the new Avengers Fear itself, number 14. He's a cool looking character. And New Avengers Fear itself, number 15. She looks scared. Running from a forest fire or a spaceship landing or something. Artwork's beautiful in all those. But this was a signed uh, independent comic, Leland Merrick. I saw it and said, I'll grab it. Flip through it. It's real simple artwork. I'm not sure exactly what it's about. But I saw the signature on it, so I said, I'll grab it just for a dollar. At that books, it's from Pasadena, California. I saw somebody did this, and they got supposedly two issues out. But she, she said in here, um, or he, I'm not sure if it's Leland. He said, I'll look for the new book. This was in the back of it, like a free preview. And I did a book with my friend Christian Ambar. We did that. We put did a preview um, ash can of our book, Substance Comics. If you ever look want to look up a book, Substance Comics, you'll see it on, I think it's on Mile High Comics, I think has it. Uh, and my comic shop, I think, has it too. But it's uh, characters, Laser Toad, Orb, and um, Troy was one of the, um, I think I think it was his name was Troy. I haven't looked at the book in years. But um, we made a bunch of characters. And the main character, the tough guy, was a lizard named Laser Toad. He had a suit of armor. He's part of a group that protected the president. And uh, the president was going to do something bad. He found out. He snuck up on him. He was, he was uh, giving up the country or giving up the, um, his power or something like that to a, another leader or something like that. And uh, he was going to destroy or set off some bomb or something like that. And uh, I can't remember exactly how it went, but uh, it's my own. My Chris wrote the book, my own story. And I don't remember. It's been probably 10 years since I looked at it. But... Um, he uh, laser toad killed him, and his friends that were part of the laser toad core came in right after he did that, and he was trying to explain what happened, and they tried to kill him because he murdered the president, and uh, he had to leave. He was a fugitive, and he came to Earth, and they befriended him and uh, all the other characters, and they 
fought evil that was coming to destroy the world. It's kind of like Galactus. It was a Galactus type character we made up, or my friend made up, and I designed and drew and stuff. But it was really good. So look it up, Substance Comics, if you want. Here's a signed book. Johnson signed this. I saw this. He signed it in marker here. But nice cover. He's a great artist. Him and Travis Cheris did some artwork in this. I'd like to get Travis to sign this. That's number 25 of Wildcats. Now, Manifest Destiny. I picked all those up. I got 1 through uh, 15. What's amazing, I got 1 through 15. And then I find 16 through 22. Look at these covers. This was a really interesting book. I went back when it first came out, and I couldn't get the first printing of number one. I still can't. i got to find it somewhere because I don't want to pay full price for it. I think it might be going for $12 or something online on mycomicshop.com. But I found 16, all these for a dollar at half-price books. Here's number 17. It has some weird creatures in this book and some weird activity. But it's, it, it's interesting. Instead of just superhero stuff all the time, it's a weird uh, sci-fi uh, fantasy adventure freaky horror not too freaky where it's kind of like oh my gosh I can't, I can't sleep but just weird stuff the imagery and everything it's really cool but this is number what's it number 18 here's 17 this is what I thought was cool here's 17 the footprint on there and this is 20 I think I said 19 for that one 20 and here's 21. They kept the same uh, cover since. And here's 22. So you see there, it's like a Bigfoot. So you see the word Sasquatch. So it's like four of six. So I got um, parts one, two, three, and four. So I just have to find the other ones. They didn't have any more. So I thought that was cool. I just grabbed all of them. And they had some that I did have. And I just left those. I don't need doubles of it. Unless I want to use them as, like I said, prizes or something like that. If anybody will want something like that, I can go back and get them. Here's Doctor Strange. I have the first six of these. I didn't get it, but I saw them and everything. So I, I liked them. And I liked the story. So I went back and got them. And I saw this one. I didn't pick it up the last time I saw it. So I finally picked it up. I saw it there. And the other ones, I think, are gone. That were after this, so I, I didn't find them again when I went back. That's number seven, a cool cover. Uh, and this, I have these, but I have these in second printings. And I want always like to get the first printings, but lately though, second printing is almost even better. Key Comics Market Guy Watch, a Key Comics Market Watch Guy talks about that, Brian. Um, second printings are sometimes worth more. You can see the covers on them. You're like, hey, I'm gonna get that second printing because I like that cover even better than the first. Maybe it's a, a shot from the inside of the book or something. But this was the number seven, first printing. So I grabbed that. This was an interesting story. I read like the first few issues and then stopped everything. But it was interesting. It was a guy teaching. He was a thief. And some girl tried to steal his truck. He's like, hey, you're doing that wrong. She's like, what? He said, why don't you leave me alone? Everything like he said, you're trying to steal my truck. So and he brought her in and taught her, taught her stuff. It was like a cool, kind of cool story. This is number eight. First printing. I think the only one I have to get is first printing is number five. This was interesting. This was one of the ladies um, I said I like. Um, Deconic. I think her name is, I forgot what her first name is. Sarah or something like that. Sally or something like that. But she's really good. Just pretty deadly story. If you, if you didn't read this, check it out. I thought it was pretty interesting. It's a girl bounty hunter and she's got like a skull on her face. I think all of it was a tattoo. I can't remember if it was a tattoo or just she was like a spiritual being or something like that. But she's a bounty hunter. And, and it's really cool. It's like a um, just a Western type thing. That's number five. And hopefully, I think it goes up to 12 or something like that. I'm going to have to look at those because that was an interesting story. This, I didn't get this when it first came out. Um, but I like Joe Hill, the Wraith. Or is it just Wraith? Wraith, number one. And then Nosferatu. So it was a um, pretty freaky looking artwork and everything in there. So I, I don't usually get horror stuff, but I saw this. I said, you know what? It's the first couple of issues. I'm going to check it out and see what I like. If I don't like it or want it or something like that, I could give away, um, like, uh, like I said, prizes. That's number one. 
Uh, this is number two of it. And they were in pretty good condition. Like I said, all for a dollar. And then these, Cullen Bunn, I didn't know anything about him like until recently. Because uh, he's, is he the one that wrote um, Batman Damned? Let me, let me check real quick. Let me push pause real quick. Okay, I'm back. I, he didn't do, Brian as I, Brian Azzarello did um, Batman Damned, but he did his own story called The Damned. But I see he wrote Venom. I looked it up real quick. He did Venom and some other stuff. So I'm not sure what he's writing now, though, but he's pretty popular. He's, he's good at horror. But um, I'm not sure if he's, and Downey Cates is the other guy. He's doing, uh, I think he's doing Venom now. But he, um, Colin did some Venom, and um, Donny Cates is going to be doing like a, a new book, a one-shot of Carnage coming out. And I'd like to make sure I get a few copies of that, because that looks like that's going to be really nice too. Um, a sleeper hit or a hit right when you see it and everything. So if you see that new um, Carnage book coming out, it should be either it's later this month or next month. Um, make sure you pick that up. I think that's going to be a, um, a big hit. But uh, this is Ill-Gotten, The Damned. And this is this guy who's trying to defend his um, casino or something like that from spiritual guys coming in. They're not allowed. Demons aren't allowed <laughs> into, into the uh, casino. And you got to keep fighting them or something. It was something like that. I was like, let me pick this up. I'm going to read this and see exactly what it is. But I'll probably do a flip through with this too. But that's ill-gotten. And there's other ones. So this one's, these. I got two of five. But this one's The Damned. And it's just like the straight one. That's all it says. That's number number two of five and from Ani Press or something like that yeah Ani Press here's number three of five and here's four of five I thought it was pretty interesting when I saw it so I said let me pick that up here's number five of five so and I saw some other ones at some, my half price books uh, places I went into, I saw Ill Gotten. I think I think it was number three of it. So and you can get it for a dollar. So like I said, I got to go back to some of my places and do some pickups of those. But uh, thank you very much for much for watching. And these are my last three. I'll show you these. Uh, I picked these up. These are kind of cool too to look through. Kind of like the previews, just to let you know what's going on. DC Nation. This is number uh, three for free. This is number five. Got those for free. And this is the Marvel one. This is number, the Uncanny X-Men number one, talking about that. But this is, I'm not sure what issue this is. But that's that one. So, talking about disassembled and everything. And that's out now. But, all right, guys. Thank you much. Thank you much for watching. And sub hopefully you subscribe. Like I said, I got to do some flip-throughs of the books. I'm going to go through um, the previews for 